My friends, it's been a while and I am getting back into the How to Write a Song Like series. The Bring Me the Horizon one I did is one of my most appreciated videos and I've had a few people show me songs that they made just using it as a guideline. I'm happy you guys are out there creating and I only do this once in a while because Obviously, I have to listen to a band's discography on repeat for like a week, then I have to write an entire song, etc. But I'm never gonna do this if I can't nail it. Side note, I always get annoyed when people do these how-to videos and they leave the vocals out when the band is extremely vocal-centric. Well, not today, my friends. By the end of this video, you will know everything that you need to make a spirit box banger worthy of Sirius or Octane. So what's happening, fam? Miami here with JST, and this channel is no stranger to spirit box. Courtney LaPlante did a Freaky Friday episode a while back, and Dan Bronstein even made some some vocal presets in Howard Benson vocals, so you can guess what I use for my vocal chain on this. I'm gonna attempt to emulate Spirit Box perfectly with this song. All right, Mike Stringer from Spirit Box. Let's go. Nah, that sounds like old architects. Um, all right, one more time. Nah, that's like old kill switch. I might have to try something new. I call upon spirits and all those that dream, those that can hear it and all those that scream. To all that are melancholy, behold the paradox. I ask you to give me the power of spirit box. It looks like third time is the charm. So you just heard a clip of my Spirit Box copycat track. I'm gonna call it Decomposer. We're gonna call this genre Ethereal Gent. Yeah, I named it and I'm not gonna change it. Just wait for the breakdown. I promise it's as mortifying as the name itself. And I bet nobody even noticed that the guitars in that example were completely MIDI. That's right. Odin 2. I've always been okay with using MIDI guitars for demo stuff, but I might have gotten this to work as a final? Let's see. Before we get into this, let's talk about the things that make Spirit Box Spirit Box. This is important. Here are some things that come up in a ton of Spirit Box songs. Number one, the synth elements that are meant to be eerie or leave you in a bit of a melancholy state. Two, gent riffs that pass the head nod, you know? Like if you can't do that to it, then it's it's not Spirit Box. Number three, verses relying on bass and drums without distorted guitars. Four, the lyrics are always haunting, but the melody is beautiful. Five, heaviest breakdown imaginable with harmonics, bends, and pick scrapes. And six, bombastic chorus. Enough talking, let's get into this. One, the synth. So for the synths, Spirit Box likes to use plucks, droning pads, and edgy saws. Square leads all the way to the bells. You know what else Square leads all the way to the bells? That subscribe button, it's Square, and leads you to push that notification bell. So make sure you smash that because my transition game is still crazy. And for those that wanna argue, a rectangle is still technically a square, so that transition still made sense. But back to the synths. Does it sound like it would be in American Horror Story or put you in a dream state? Then you're onto something. And that's the only thing. People think that Spirit Box only uses spooky synths, but they also use almost whimsical style ones to switch it up. Don't be afraid to layer different sounds to get what you want. Let's go. So first I'm gonna show you the synth that I had for this, and then I'm gonna explain why I went this route with it. So I just had a little intro pluck in the beginning, and I layered it with a bit of a saw synth. But one thing that I wanted to do different here was kind of follow the path of Spirit Box, which is all encompassing. There's a point for everything they do. So this one starts with a typical synth lead and I add another synth lead underneath that ramps up and gets edgier. And by doing that, it kind of shows what the song is gonna do as well. Cause the song is gonna start off like, oh, okay, this might be a regular song, but as the song goes on, it gets edgier, you're gonna see.
and going into the part. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That was the synth. On to number two, the gent. So that takes care of the start of the intro, but what would an intro be without a gent riff that leads into a haunting verse? Not a spirit box intro, that's for sure. So the next step is to down tune as much as your guitar will allow. For this, we're down in F sharp, which is the tuning Mike Stringer still uses, I'm sure. So let's grab a guitar and get to, wait, no, we don't have to do that because my guitar doesn't even go down to F sharp. So we're gonna have to use that MIDI I was talking about. That's right, this whole song, completely MIDI besides my vocals. Don't lie, you could not tell in that sample earlier when you heard it in the intro. I did this whole thing with Odin 2 from Solemn Tones. If you guys want a specific video on how to edit guitar MIDI to make it sound more realistic, let me know in the comments below. But let's go make that riff. So like I told you guys, I'm using Odin for guitar on this. I'm using it with Tone Forge Jeff Loomis. Without it, it kind of sounds like this. And like I told you guys, it just has to pass the head nod test. You know what I'm saying? And it does just that. Now, to sound like Spirit Box though, you're gonna wanna take that same guitar before it hits the amp, pitch it down a full octave. Now that might sound a little muddy to you right now, but when you blend them together, and the settings for these are pretty much the same. I have the gain down on this one a bit, but when you put these together, it adds a lot of body to it. So I'll play the top and check. So now if we add that intro going into the gent riff, So step one and step two actually work together. You're gonna to make sure that you have a synth pretty much like that one and then have your typical gent riff. What's going to make this different is what happens in the verse. The drums and bass. Now for the verses, we're gonna back off the guitars unless it's like a background ambient lead, at least in the beginning of it. If you only listen to the heavy sections of Spirit Box, you wouldn't realize how locked in some of the drum and bass grooves get. This has stayed consistent even when they switched from uh, the old, what was the old guy's name, Ryan to Zev? Think Rule of Nines or Sun Killer. Let's get our drum groove locked in and match the bass to the kick drum. Think like Tesseract if they stayed in 4-4. So I guess it's not really Tesseract, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get into this bass and drum groove I'm talking about here. I'll go out of the intro into it. So yeah, you don't wanna have anything too crazy going on here with the drums, but it shows that the drummer has chops and at the same time is gonna leave a lot of room open for vocals to be the focus. And if you guys have listened to some of my other stuff, you know that my basses are usually a lot more distorted than this. So we dialed it back a little bit because we wanted to blend in and fit nicely as I showed you before. On to the next thing. Now that we have locked in, we're gonna bring the guitars back halfway through with an ambient lead in the background. Now that we're done with guitars, on to the next thing. Number four, the lyrics. So when you think about the lyrics for a Spirit Box song, the word dread comes to mind. 
gloom, and melancholy. But when you couple this with an etheric vocal, it helps you find beauty in the misery. And when you're doing anything ethereal, it's important that you make every single line visual. So these are the lyrics that I made to fit the mood. <clears throat> Those moments I dream, I see the best and worst of you and I. Ghosts surround our room, controlling the mood when I close my eyes. See how like visual this is? I'd rather be buried than saved. Will I feel the rain in my grave or prolong the rot and decay of my body? Will it haunt me? Notice how every one of those lines is extremely visual. This is what plays a key part in how Spirit Box sounds and even gets their music videos across. Think of Circle With Me and notice how in the video, the camera is literally circling around Courtney. It's all encompassing, so let's get to the melody. So Courtney doesn't do one specific type of vocal. Uh, but there's one thing that seems consistent. Whenever she's doing clean vocals, it is always relaxed, not too pushed. It doesn't sound like she's trying, oh, that kind of stuff, you know, because she's saving all of the power and energy for when she screams. So it has a dynamic every time. So we're going to go over this again with the same uh, lyrics that I just had. And I'm going to try out a melody kind of in the Arabic scale. But yeah, what she does is beautiful and elegant. And I'm gonna try and emulate the same thing here. Since I'm trying to emulate a female vocalist, you'll see me switching in and out of my falsetto, um, cause I'll use that instead of pushing. So it doesn't, I still can hit the notes, but it doesn't feel like I'm trying too hard until I start screaming in a bit. Not my best take ever, but you know, it kind of gives you the idea. That came out more interesting than I thought it would. Definitely was in some type of Arabic scale, which is perfect for these type of spiritual vocal melodies. But how about we listen to this whole thing as a whole right now? Let's check out that chorus and breakdown, right? I hope you guys loved this episode as much as I loved making this song. If you'd love an in-depth mix tutorial on this, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do it on Twitch. I plan on streaming pretty soon and I'm gonna be doing that often. So how do you guys think I did? Did you love the result? Was the breakdown absolutely filthy? Did I give a similar vocal style to Courtney LaPlante? Let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys next time. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do this one time and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am I here. Mic drop. You know, cause Mike's in spirit box and I thought that'd be kind of funny. All right, catch you guys later. <laughs>